The point of this video is to show you how you can get your app to App Store without owning a Mac or renting a virtual Mac. For this video to follow along you need an iPhone for testing. I got a cheap iPhone SE 2022 and it works like a charm. When buying an iPhone just watch out to get an iPhone that's not too old because uh, Apple supports their devices for up to 7 years and you want to be able to test your app on the latest iOS. Then you need uh, any operating system that's not macOS, Windows or Ubuntu or whatever. What else? What else? You need an Apple developer account, of course. You can publish without it. You need GitHub account for versioning and building your app. And the last ingredient is uh, patience. Lots of lots of patience. That kind of patience, like if you remember when you apply to Apple developer account, that kind of patience. So what does it actually take to publish an app to App Store? Let me break it down for you. You first need to create an app identifier. This is like your app's official name tag in the Apple's ecosystem. Without it, your app is it just doesn't exist in their universe. Then you need to configure your app's capabilities. It is something like permissions for Android. Then you upload the app to Apple's servers. You upload it to App Store Connect. You take your app package called an IPA file and deliver it to Apple servers. And uh, before releasing my app uh, to the review, I just poke around, I install it on my uh, cheap iPhone and make sure that everything works. Then when I'm ready, I submit it to Apple's review. And uh, that's where you need patience. There's a long, long Apple guidelines document that you might break. It can be a number of reasons. In any case, any kind of rejection means a few more days of prolonged review. Let's go over each step in more detail. First step is uh, to create an app identifier. It's a unique identifier for your app uh, within the Apple Zicon system. To create it, log in to your developer Apple account and then go to Certificates IDs Profiles and click on Identifiers. Click to create a new identifier, select an app ID, you will register an app ID to enable your app, select type app, description write for description write whatever, but in the bundle ID it needs to match the bundle identifier in your Expo iOS bundle identifier. It's a reverse domain name style, so if your domain is for example example.com you would write com.example. And the next step is to select the capabilities. In Android that would be similar to permissions. If for example your app needs sharing capabilities, needs to share to other apps or apps needs to share to it, you will select app groups. Associated domains if you want to enable deep linking. If your app will have a sign in for users, it's not enough to have a Google and email and pass and other identifiers, it needs to also have the sign in with Apple. And I won't go into details what you need to configure it, there will be another video on signing up with Apple, but select the capabilities that you need and press continue. Check that everything is okay and register your app identifier. When you have it registered, go to App Store Connect and click to add a new app. I suppose it will be an iOS. Pick a name, something that you want to be visible in the App Store. That's your name. Primary language, I always choose English. My app is always in English. And bundle ID is uh, that identifier that you just created. So you will select it from the dropdown. SKU is a unique ID for your app that is not visible to users. So pick whatever. If you want your app to be downloadable, visible to all users, you would pick the full access and then click to create. When creating an app, you will also need to fill in application metadata, so app name, app description, uh, fill if you collect anything from the user, you will have a checklist what you collect it for. You also need to set up link to privacy policy, then you'll need to answer what kind of encryption algorithms your app uses. If your app communicates with an external server or uses Firebase, it's most likely the standard encryption algorithm. Now that app identifier is created, app is created and registered registers to the app identifier, it's time to configure test flight. And test flight you can access it by going to App Store Connect Apple and go to test flight. It's a beta testing service provided by Apple so you can distribute pre-release versions 
off your apps uh, to testers. To configure test flight, you would want, uh, well, I configured internal testing and then you would get, create a new internal group called, I don't know, I called it testers. And then in the testers set your email on the iPhone device where the app will be tested, install test flight. And once uh, the tester is enrolled uh, in the tester program, uh, the devices will appear over here. And that's it. You can distribute your app and test it uh, before it ends up in the review phase. After configuring TestFlight, all that is left is uh, building and uh, publishing the app to TestFlight. Uh, my solution uses GitHub Actions, as the title of the video already says. But the first build, I always need to run it on EAS Cloud. That is because uh, EAS will require Apple credentials. It needs to create a distribution certificate, a provisioning profile. After the first build and creation of credentials, those credentials can be reused for all the subsequent builds. Easiest way to configure iOS credentials in uh, Expo is by running this command, invoking it from the command line build for the iOS. Uh, this command initiates a wizard and just uh, follow the wizard, uh, authenticate and then it will ask you to create a distribution, prof a distribution certificate and provisioning profile. And it will create a build and it uh, shouldn't cost you a thing. And then after that you can continue using GitHub Actions if you like or continue using EAS Cloud. Uh, one note on pricing, TAS Cloud, you will get 15 iOS low priority builds for free each month. And with GitHub, uh, well, at least I have 3000 uh, free build CI minutes each month. But the uh, thing with running uh, GitHub macOS runner is that it gets multiplied. So the free CI minutes are multiplied by a number of 10. So instead of uh, 3000 build minutes, I get uh, exactly 300 build minutes. After I spend all those uh, free CI build minutes, there's no multiplier and uh, it uh, starts costing me uh, around uh, two and a uh, half dollars per build. It's a little more expensive than EAS because EAS will cost you uh, two dollars per build. And how I publish the iOS app to test flight, it is with uh, GitHub Actions. I have a workflow that I can trigger that releases to Apple. It is a bit different than this workflow, but the most basic ex example looks like this. Job's name is release SIPA file. Important thing that it needs to run not on Ubuntu, but it needs to run on macOS. Other steps are regular with other GitHub actions that you use to build your EAS app. So you first need to always need to check out the repository, set up node environment. I'm using the version 20, install dependencies, install and set up PAS environment. And for that, you need the Expo token. You can create a new Expo token by going to the settings, access tokens and create a new token. Build iOS app, it will build on Mac OS and it will no longer ask you for distribution certificate and provision in profile. And it is a non-interactive build. So once it's done, it creates this file. And that file is used for the last step that publishes to test flight. To publish to test flight, you need the path to the built IPA file. And you also need to create, to provide GitHub secrets, exactly three keys that we will create in App Store Connect Portal. So to create App Store issuer ID, key ID and private key, let's head to App Store Connect Portal and then go to users and access, integrations, keys, and click to create a new key. Name it, name it somehow. For access, you need the app manager and generate the key. Let's create and see what we get. This is the key ID, private key you can download that, and issuer ID, it will be visible here. For the purpose of this video, it's just empty, but uh, when you log into App Store Connect, you should see your issuer ID. If you set everything, you can run your GitHub action. Once your build uh, completes without error, your app build uh, should end up in test flight and then you can install it on your device and test it. What's left to get your app to App Store is to send it to review. To send it to review, you need to fill the app metadata, create a new review request, fill everything that's needed, select your app version, 
fill the information for reviewers, how they should test it and what they should test. It is optional, but I do recommend that you fill it. Send it to review and wait. Uh, this is where you need patience. Uh, it can last uh, from a day to several days and every up rejection uh, prolongs your up submission like for a few days. You fix it and then you send it to review and then you wait again. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. I will share the source code and the GitHub repo in the description of my video and thank you for watching.